What if the chaos in America is more than just social or political? And what if it's spiritual? In this powerful interview, Angeline Marie, author of Soulless Society, reveals the truth behind our society's decline, media lies, and how we can reclaim faith and values. What do you mean by spiritual warfare in your book? And and how is it connected to the problems we face today? Well, I think this book, first of all, let me say, I believe it's for believers, but also non-believers. In fact, my hope is that a believer would pick it up, read it, and pass it to someone they know that maybe is on the fence, doesn't quite know what to make of what's going on, somebody who might be asking questions. But the reason why I think it's important, I, I kind of open with, and, and throughout the book, I talk about how we're really in a spiritual war, but it's playing out in the physical. So if you don't have a spiritual foundation and you're looking around, you're like, wow, what is going on? I mean, it's like crazy train right now. And that's the message I hope to deliver more specifically to those without spiritual foundation. Because I think all of us know somebody who we meet, I I know I do daily, no matter where I go, you'll get somebody and they'll say, something's not right. Like they know in their gut that something's not right, but they can't quite put their finger on it. And so I wanted to reveal, or I should say the Lord wanted to reveal that it's a spiritual war and we can't fix it with physical means. So it doesn't matter who becomes president. It doesn't, you It's not that it doesn't matter, but it's not going to fix the problem. And so I really, throughout the book, try to bring things that we're seeing in the physical, but kind of pull the curtain and show the reader that really what's going on here is a spiritual battle. And and, and there's going to come a point where we have to deal with it on a spiritual level. And that's kind of how I close the book. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we know that Jesus is king and that is who we follow. So I'm just going to backtrack into that when you when you were talking about who becomes president. We know that we have to center on him at all times. And and, you know, um, you know, America's uh, loss of of morals and faith affected areas like the government, the media and the church. So how has this media shaped how people see the truth and how can we learn to see past the influence? You know, I'm the most disappointed when we talk about the media, because that's what I studied in college. And back then it was still be an objective reporter. There were still ethics. It was don't put your spin on a story, but find the facts and then lay them out for the viewers or listeners. And I'm disgusted. I call them prostitutes. Honestly, I'm disgusted with what we supposedly call is journalism. We have become where we were supposed to be the watchdog of those in power. We have become their lapdog. And I'm talking about the journalists. So now rather than reporting the news, we are taking orders from the top and we're disseminating what I call garbage. And unfortunately, Also, because this ties to the education system, education system has failed because they're not teaching children to critically think anymore. I would say for the last couple of decades, it's more about we're going to be this collective. You don't have to think. Just listen to what the media dishes out to you and take it as truth. And so as you can see, and as you'll see in the book, I hit on all these pillars and how they all play a part one way or another, whether we're talking about media, the church I hold to the highest um, fault because I think they have fallen down so terribly in this area, but education, and now we're dealing with social media. So I think the media is really lying to the people, whether or not these characters that call themselves reporters, believe it or not, I can't prove one way or another, but I do believe that this is coming from the top And now most of these outlets, whether it's a TV station, in fact, I just heard today that George Soros conveniently just purchased 220 stations around the country, radio stations. Now, why do you think he would be closing that deal just before this election? Because I'll tell you one thing the conservatives are powerful in is in talk radio, conservative talk radio. So 
you know, is that why maybe he snatched all those stations up to have control over the content? I don't know, but um, mm -hmm. I, I just think it's coming from all pillars, but the media is really falling down on the job. And I think, unfortunately, again, people are not thinking through what they're being presented, which is what you should do. And even I call myself conservative, but I will also watch liberal media because I want to know what they're telling the people. And then you have to think through what you're being told. And the truth is always in there somewhere, but it's just a matter of finding it. And so I, that's another thing. I really encourage people, take what information you're bringing into your mind, but you need to look at it with a critical eye. Don't just say, oh, well, that must be it because I heard it from this guy. And I'll tell you, unfortunately, even on the conservative side, there are some liars. And, and so you have to be very careful what you put in your mind. Exactly. And that's one of the things I've spoken to, you know, many ladies about is, is just what do you, what do you, your eyes are your windows to your soul. What you hear is, is what you're going to consume. And then what happens then? You have to be able to discern. You have to go to the Lord. You have to get his understanding. You ask him for wisdom because there is just so much out there that is, is, is not right. And I talk about that all the time mm -hmm. about how like there is so much, um, you know, let me YouTube people that are putting the wrong ideas into people's uh, minds and that the young people today are also so influenced by the, the um, you know, the secular media and what the ideals of them they are. And they're just buying it. They're buying it. Hook, line, and sink, and sinker. So, you know, so what concerns do you have about technology, you know, with, with the youth and things like AI in a relation to, relationship to, uh, to faith and soul? Well, I think... When and, and I talk about social media specifically in the book because it has made such a huge impact on our culture. And that's not just our culture, that's around the world. I believe there could be good things to it, just like the internet. And then we know the devil always takes and perverts to use for, for his purposes. So I think we have to be really careful. I don't think even a lot of Christians realize uh, when Facebook came on the scene in the book, I show how it's really came. It grew out of a um, government department of defense program. So this was not just some guy in a college dorm room that made this up and then it catapulted to the top. That was just the cover story. And so I think once you realize, when you read in the book, how a lot of these social media gods, Elon Musk, um, Bill Gates and his empire with Microsoft and all these social media people, those are just puppets. They are given orders and also backing, monetary backing, to bring the social media companies to the top and then they put them on the stock market and they make a lot of money, everybody involved. But I think the worst part of it is how you said this stuff comes into the mind and especially young people, I don't think know what deceit is behind this. And so part of the devil's spiritual war is he's using this tool to taint people. I mean, from what I understand, I'm, I've seen some evil things on social media, but but because I don't participate in that a lot. But I don't think these young kids, there's no filters. I mean, from what I understand, they could even catch pornography or whatever evil messages come across these things. And I don't even think their parents are aware. And so this is a way to... You know, John 10, 10 says that the enemy comes to steal, kill, destroy. I mean, don't take that lightly. And I think the social media platforms are part of that. Yes, we can use them for good. We can, there, there are some ministries that use them for good, but you have to be aware that there's always that evil side. And so unfortunately, that is a big cultural thing around the world right now. And we just have to be... I think on guard, especially for your parents, but even for yourself, just watch where you're putting your attention and how much you are consuming that stuff daily, because it, you're right. It all comes back to the stolen as the soul. So in John 10, 10, I believe 
that a lot of the social media, and you mentioned the word technology, it's the technology that the devil's going to use to steal the soul. And I go into that when I talk about technology, um, what I believe is going to be the transhumanism movement. And that's where it sounds so science fiction, but I'm telling you, this stuff is rolling out as we speak. And I think it's only get more weird and worse as time goes on. And the devil will definitely use that as a door to the soul. I do agree because I even said to my grandson, hey, you know, it's going to come a point in your life. And I don't even know if I'll be around then where you don't, you don't even, all you have to do is think it and, and it'll be. I mean, that's how technology will just be ingrained in you and, and it'll just take over. We, we don't know what it's capable of in the future, you know, thinking and it's going to be it. That's that's a scary place, but it could happen. I mm-hmm. mean, it could happen. I mean, you see things in the movies, right? They they and they transpire and they've come to fruition as, as we are speaking now. Things are happening. So you know, just so much going on in the world. And, and I thank you for the ministry that you're doing. And I call this a ministry because you are really helping people understand that they are under spiritual warfare. And this is what it's really about. It's our soul that the Satan is trying to fight for. And we need to, re, you know, just harness our souls to Christ because he is the one who's going to save us from this. So we need to focus in on him. So now, my, my last question to you would be what, what can everyday people do to help bring back moral values and strengthen society? Well, in the book, throughout the book, I'm talking about not the nicest topics. And, but I did not want to leave people with the no hope, you know, everything's terrible message. And so I end with just that. And, and the Lord led me to say, look, we have to put on the whole armor of God. So Ephesians six is very important in this. And that's kind of how I close the book. This is the way that you fight the spiritual war in the physical. So it's, again, it's not who's put in office. It's not, you know, who, who or what you might think could get us out of this. Cause that actually no human man could do that. And I think we as Christians need to, always go in prayer and keep focused on the Lord. Even when the thing, when things seem just so terrible and there's no way out. I mean, think of Daniel, think of Gideon. There's, there's always the Lord. He's the only way. And so I talk about the armor because I believe that's what he wanted me to focus on in the last chapter. And that's where we put our hope. And that's how we're going to fight to make it through this. And I think you as a, I think Christians in general need to share this information with non-believers and they may not listen today. They may say, I don't want to hear it, whatever. But you know what? If you just plant that seed, there's going to come a day where days are so dark. They may think back to a conversation they had with you. And it may be just what changes their whole perspective on everything, because where I went 20 years ago, when I got into this whole thing, I would tell people we're in a spiritual war. And they looked at me like I was absolutely nuts. To them, it was a science fiction, what I was saying. But now even people that don't have a moral foundational base or upbringing, they actually listen when I say that. And they say, you know, I think you're right. Because the even out of their mouth, they'll say words like, this is nothing more than evil. It's evil. And I never used to hear non-believers use those words, but I'll tell you, there's there's something from the Lord in them that's picking up, and I believe that's the Holy Spirit. The radar is out there, and I just, you know, just pray for those people, pray for believers around the world, and we know how the book ends. Amen. And you know, the thing is, too, is, is that anybody out there, you know, the Holy Spirit has been t- tapping on your soul your whole life. And what you think is your mind, maybe the Holy Spirit guiding you, warning you, teaching you, sending people to you to show you the truth. And the only truth you're going to have is in the word of God. And so I'm just going to put that out there right now. And I, and I know that Angeline feels the same way. And you know what? We are giving away Angeline's book, you know, Soulless Society. I love that, you know, with the Statue of Liberty, because I live in the New York area. So uh-huh. it's very apropos. 
um, the ultimate deception that took the land of plenty to a nation of death. Oh my gosh, we were just talking about that the other day about how America has changed so much. We never thought we would see what we are seeing now. And right. it's really, really scary. Mm -hmm. And so um, we, we, we will announce the winner of this book um, on the call with Nancy Sebado on the Facebook page and Instagram. Angeline, how can they find out more about you and what you're doing? I have a weekly uh, radio program on KCXL. If you go to truthseekersradioshow.com, you can find out more about me. And also to find out more about the book, if you visit soullesssocietybook.com, soullesssocietybook.com, and all the proceeds for the book are going to Russ Dizdar's Shatter Ops Ministry they are a group of Christian men. He's no longer with us, the founder, but he still has Christian men that go to the dark places, um, I believe nationally and internationally, rescuing traffic victims and then rehabilitating them. Wow. And so with that, what would you like to leave my audience with today? Well, the days, unfortunately, will get darker, but we know that if we stand with the Lord and we focus on him, that's what he's, that's A, what he wants, but B, that's going to be our only way to deal with what's coming. Because I think as times go on, we're even going to have a breakthrough, some kind of spiritual veil, and we're going to start seeing some of these spiritual warfare things play out in real time. This is not going to any longer just be something I think about or read in a fiction book. This is going to be real stuff. And we need to have that our full armor of God on to stand in the day and keep standing and fight. What if the challenges you face every day at home, work, or in your heart are part of a bigger spiritual struggle? After watching this interview with Angeline Marie and ask yourself, how can faith and truth help you make a change? So if you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe for more Christ-centered interviews. Be sure to visit my website, thecallwithnancysebedo.com, and see all the updates on our previous guests. Until next time, all glory and honor to King Jesus.